Welcome everybody back to Nowhere. Joining again is Steve from Voices from the Mausoleum. Today we are going to be talking about the next three episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog, which has two segments within each episode. If you want to stay and stream along with us, you can watch these on HBO Max. That is the episode list that we are going along with and everything. So Steve, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. This has really been fun though. It's sort of, it's been, it's nice to have this like little retro tradition of going back and watching these old episodes and I don't know, I like now I find myself just looking forward to it every couple of weeks. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. oh I gotta, gotta watch my courage episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And then introducing like just reintroducing people to it because there's so many people that have mm-hmm. are subscribed to my channel or people that I talk to, customers they've never even seen courage. And I'm like, you guys need to go back and watch this for real. This is a show that's worth going back and watching, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, people obviously know it or know of it if they haven't actually watched it. But it's one of those things where I think it it can easily sort of just fall, you know, into the obscurity of the past a little bit. People tend to forget it. It doesn't get as much love as like, you know, like Scooby-Doo or um, sort of anything else from like this particular era. But even like... I don't know, like Dex. Well, you did like Dexter's Lab. Well, I know Powerpuff Girls got a reboot. Powerpuff Girls is pretty popular that because I think they even got a reboot. I think they, they even got a did reboot. Like a- I don't know if Dexter ever got a reboot or Ed, Ed, and Eddie, but this was like of that time. Yeah. Right. And now they have Ed, Ed and Eddie. A lot of those shows that we grew up on are now part of the uh, the Adult Swim lineup. So the first two hours is like the Ed, Ed and Eddie, King of the Hill, kind of like those. Just kind of more mature, somewhat, I guess, kind of cartoons. <laughs> King of the Hell was definitely more, that was more like Simpsons level, though, right? I feel yeah. like Eddie, Eddie was a little, you know, it's a mix of the two is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did ready? you see the um, <laughs> total Sutton tangent? Did you see the Beavis and Butthead sketch from SNL this past weekend? No, I did not. I did not. I heard. Uh, I heard about the SNL, and I heard because I heard uh, one of the famous basketball players was on it too. Yes, yes, she was on it um, during yeah. the weekend update. But they did a. I mean, it's like stupid, but it was like stupid funny because the because the a lot of the actors kind of broke during it, so it sort of adds to the humor. <laughs> they're trying not to laugh, um, but they did a, sort of like a little Beavis and Butthead sketch. It was, it was stupid, but it was it was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Those are sometimes the best, like when they break character just a little bit and you can see them like kind of hiding the laughter because they can't, you know? <laughs> oh, and some of them, uh, it was a Heidi Garter. She couldn't even hide it. It was just full on <laughs> crack. crack. Was, well, they had not to spoil too much of it, but they had like two of the the actors just sort of dressed and looked like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> and I don't think I don't think she saw what they looked like until the actual sketch. And nice. like, until they actually because so it was a surprise <laughs> her, so she's completely taken off guard. It was, it was pretty good. Though. And they had like full on prosthetic to like make them like have like the buck teeth and like the hairlines and <laughs> nice the live action Beavis and Butt. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Ryan Gosling played Beavis. It was perfect. Oh, that's golden. <laughs> that's golden. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, just side tangent. Just made me think of it. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So let's get, we'll get into what's it next as episode seven, I believe, right? We're on episode seven now in our first I segment, so. right? Yeah, this will be episode seven, yeah. All right, so let's get into Queen of the Black Puddle. A single puddle remains early, uh, eerily behind after a dark rainstorm, hiding a terrible secret. After its quiet queen steals Eustace away, Courage dives into her world to rescue him. So, thoughts on this one, Steve? How did you feel about this one? Yeah, this one was like really fun, really creative. Um, the way that she, you know, transported through the water, uh, it really reminded me a lot of. Um, <clears throat> it honestly had a little bit of a ring feel to it, almost like um, the. I don't know if she was based on like a like a Japanese sort of Asian water spirit. I forget what they're That's called. True. Yeah, um, no, they do have a specific name. I know I keep thinking of Samara now just because of the ring, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm gonna do a quick Google just because we can. Um, oh yeah. But it really reminded me of that. Um Sujin? Su- Sujin? Oh no, that's the <laughs> it's the Shinto god of water. Never mind, not what I'm thinking. It is <laughs> something else. Maybe then maybe it's not Japanese. Um oh gosh, I don't remember, but 
whatever the yeah, whatever that water entity is supposed to be like uh uh it just reminded me so much of that and it's funny enough is like this came out like this this episode either aired in 99 or 2000 which is only like a couple of years after ringu um yeah. So I'm wondering if the people who, you know, if the writers and directors like really sort of, yeah, I mean, they, have, they know their horror, obviously, yeah, there's so many ties and nods, and I'm sure a lot of them probably watch Japanese horror and all that, or Korean horror. So I'm like, that, there had to have been some time. A little bit of inspiration there, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I even like the design of her character. Her design is really cool, like when she's luring Eustace in, not when she kind of transforms later, but yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I mean the other standout. I think it's this it's this segment um, where Courage repeats himself. He says a line that he said in another episode. Um, what I wouldn't do for love. I think I think it's yeah. in this one when he when, yeah. when he's just targeting uses. And I'm like, this is the second time he said it. Uh, really <laughs> hammering home the like, even though uses is such a piece of crap. <laughs> like Muriel loves him so. Because of that, it's important to courage. So he's oh, like, yeah. you can right. see, like when Eustace is gone, you can see she's she's broken down. She's very yeah. sad. Like she's just sitting in the chair. She's so sad. Doesn't want to cook or clean or do anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I thought that that was sweet and just another little like nod. And I'm wondering how like is that going to be sort of a continuing motif in the show? Is like this what he would do for love kind of thing? Because I think the other one was the goose god is when he said it too. Yeah. So. <laughs> but uh yeah what, what about you i also thought it was kind of funny just from uh eustace's standpoint we had like a kind of a weed joke thing going on with the darn herbal teas like joke thing and <laughs> that was hilarious <laughs> I, you know some i wonder if some, some of these uh writers were maybe hitting the hitting the weed it's a little possible. bit uh, oh yeah with the some creativity of that goes into it oh like some of these creativity ideas like you you would think like yeah they would just come out at those certain moments <laughs> uh-huh yeah oh man no but this this was a fun one this one um i did not remember at all yeah I remember this one i kind of did when i saw her design and the puddle thing i kind of like that kind of jogged my memory a little bit and like sort of made me think of like you know like said the ring or like dark water of that nature mm -hmm. some kind of horror like that <laughs> yeah yeah where does she um sit for you like in terms of like the the big villains we've had so far i i liked her a lot she was a lot of fun she'd probably be right now in my top three for sure probably like number three i really liked her a lot and just the uh, especially once we get into courage going to rescue eustace there's like a lot of action that goes on in that sequence and we have him diving down there with his little scuba suit and everything going to visit her world and all that <laughs> yeah oh i love the realization of the necklaces sort of the, the little like ritual totem thing that she has he's like, yep. he's like uh <laughs> Yes. Okay. Those skeletons wearing that. Yep. Okay. I see what's going to happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like the little, the seashell, you know, sitting down, like it does look just, it's just funny. And then the fact that like, she's luring in Eustace, like you're like, who would want to lure in this guy? Like this man, she really knew this man, but she's, I mean, she's just using him, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I all the people <laughs> use this. So, yeah. Um, you know, not because there's definitely, there was another episode yeah, everyone seems to, you know, because we'll, we'll get to the the, the the other duck episode. Like, I don't know why everyone just like loves Eustace so much. I, I really don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's, he's, yeah, it's a weird attraction that he's got. Sometimes it's those people, you know, they might be jerks or a holes, but they're just, they're, you know, people are attracted to them. They're like magnets. <laughs> it sounds toxic if you ask me, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But. That's I, what I yeah, I would say she's probably in my top three as well, probably with like Fred and Ramses, right? Like I think um just it was just a lot of fun. You know, yeah. with the anime yeah, and the animation style too was really cool. Um just the move the movements that they use and the lighting and um yeah, it just it has such a texture to it, right? Oh yeah, and then I noticed too they had that uh a little bit of that computer 3d effect going on too when he after he dries up the puddle and she tries to come through the floor like the when the rug stretches it was like a little just a little moment where they had that kind of like the ramses thing you know the design of that a little bit the ghost yeah yeah they're you know they're definitely this is that that that, right, that turn of 
I guess it is turn of the century, right? Um, where they, they are sort of experimenting with this 3D animation. Like, how can we sort of elevate this moment without fully committing to 3D? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, where it was like with Ramses, it was like, all right, this villain only exists in the 3D. Here they're using it to, like you said, kind of just add a little bit of that extra texture to it. Yeah, but so would you like to get on to our next segment now, Steve? Yeah, so part two for this one. Everyone wants to direct. I also really did. This was a really good two-parter <laughs> on this episode. So everyone wants to direct. Dazzled by famous director Benton Tarantella. Guile and, Benton Tarantella's Guile and Wit encourages owners grant the grisly director their basement for his movie. Learning the director's dark intent, the dog scrambles to prevent a ravenous resurrection. So, I mean, obviously, Benton Tarantella, we got Quentin Tarantino here. Quentin Tarantino. Um, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't, I didn't get the, um, so Errol von Volkheim is his, like, other director, his co Oh, yeah, his partner, yeah. I couldn't, I, I didn't, it, I didn't pick up on who he's based on right away, if, is, if he is based on anything. Um, like, as far as, like, another director, the name didn't sound familiar yeah. to me. Yeah, oh, did, and not a play on words like the Quentin one, but this one was definitely a fun one. Like I liked it just because the design of the two, like the zombie design, plus I'm, I love zombie stuff and everything. So like the design of the character was really fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's just like, no, it, it doesn't raise any red flags. He just like comes, shows up to the door, totally decrepit. And they're just yeah. like, this is fine. <laughs> like the script's got like blood on it, and Muriel's like, "Ooh, a real movie script!" <laughs> yeah, she's so excited, like, "Ooh, that's so fancy!" And like, Eustace just cares about his money always. You know, they offered him money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so yeah. I mean, so the the plot is right. So he wants to use the farmhouse for his movie, um, which was what was the name of the movie? The Return of the Zombies from Beneath the Farm. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a title. Yeah. <laughs> Very um, B movie style, very B movie. Very B movie. <laughs> well, he says he's an independent movie director. <laughs> um, but apparently, he's so famous, but he's an independent movie director. So, I mean, so we're yeah. using interchangeable type, uh, you know, phrasing here. But um, yeah, so we find out that he wants to resurrect. I guess his his directorial partner, um, yep. Von Volkheim. Um, but then, because apparently, Harry, their house is built on top of it. <laughs> so, how old are these movies? <laughs> That was the only thing I was like, so we're obviously in like quasi like we don't know. I mean, we already sort of knew like we don't know what time period this is supposed to be. Like it's yeah. very like intentionally obscure. But I was like, <laughs> all right. So clearly this old couple has been in this house a long time. So when the heck were these <laughs> were they making movies? <laughs> <laughs> For real. Like I feel like they had to be like, yeah, like. 40s or 50s directors kind of thing you know that back in the day that's what they make it seem like <laughs> right so this farmhouse had to have then been built like i don't know so is this like way in the future that we don't re i guess if there's aliens coming <laughs> maybe i don't know is this yeah, supposed to be sort of that's yeah that's the one thing is like there's a lot to play on where with your mind like where we are time wise Mm -hmm. country where they are in the country like said so with all the different accents and all the voices like it's kind of hard to tell are we, are we in america are they we don't know that for sure <laughs> well right i mean there's certainly very like there's a lot of americana you know infused but there, yeah. right, you said, there's a lot of other cultural influences too um which is really cool this is what i was saying i think in the either our, the first or second episode we did where i was like i wonder if this is going to be like adventure time where we start to see like little hints at like to what this is really all about and like little like what we're like you know hints to the past so i'm like maybe this is like so my conspiracy theory is that like eustace and muriel are sort of like anti-tech sort of folks where they're just like they live outside of like the rest of society they're not they're not yeah. progressing any further hence all like the retro i mean they have like the old boob tube but then there's a computer with like very sophisticated ai in the attic <laughs> 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 um the courage only uses so oh, and we have no idea how it's hooked up like it's like because it, wi-fi wasn't a thing at this time really at all so it's like it had probably getting internet I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so i mean yeah so he uses the computer in this episode and then i guess yeah he finds out that so um tarantella and volkheim were like murderous 
directors. They would like <laughs> scam people or trick people into being in their movies and then yeah. killing them. <laughs> yeah, so they're like, yeah, had like a cult thing going on. Yeah, I got the whole satanic like cult worshiping type vibe going on. That's what we got. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, pretty much, I mean, I guess Cartoon Network probably wouldn't let them talk about satanic, like, cult sacrifices and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, all, you know, without saying as much, we clearly are getting a little bit of that. Yeah, definitely. And I like, it was funny, too, like, how um, uh, Eustace is just involved in being the camera guy. He's, like, trying to get the shots and the best cinematography he wants for the shot. <laughs> oh, they're totally bought into it, right? He's in the, he's behind the camera. Muriel's acting, right? She's yeah. on the slab, like, you know. <laughs> um, but I love that they're, they they have to stick to the script. And then so Courage uses that to his advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Writing it with quick, quick draft, rough draft. Yep. <laughs> quick edits, you know, and they, <laughs> they just bury themselves <laughs> in the, uh, back into the ground. <laughs> Oh man, but you know, I really, I, I love this one too, and I love that we sort of get a double whammy of um, horror for this episode, right? Like sometimes it's always like horror comedy. It now, it, I mean, they're they're all funny, right? But like yeah. they, they 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 leaned more into the horror tropes for both parts of this episode. Oh yeah, this one was a strong horror one. I like the zombie stuff and like said the puddle thing, like having the water demon element and the zombies like. Strong, strong horror vibes for sure with both of these segments. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, sure. Um, <laughs> I don't think there were any other little tidbits. Um, oh, yeah, then they were going to be paid five trillion dollars. <laughs> was, was was the number on it? Of course, of course that's what get used. That's that's what gets Eustace to want to do it. Is the money? It is getting astronomical. The amounts of money that they're offering now, like it seems to be increasing. Like every. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. From like five bucks to you know five trillion, I guess. Yep. <laughs> um, any other bits um, about this one? No, I'm ready to move on to the next segment. You ready? Take it away. All right. Let's see if I pull this one up and get to the right spot. The snowman cometh. Faced with an inevitable melting demise, the last of the snowman laments his fate, but when he spies Courage and his owners inexplicably on vacation in the Arctic, he plots to sap them of their anti-melting gene to stave off his own destruction. Right, because we all know it's our genes that keep us from melting in the sun. I know, like, the, the science in this one, like, sometimes it makes you think, like, just, you're like, huh? <laughs> well, right, there's no logic here. No, I um, loved it. What did you feel about this one? <laughs> oh man, so funny! I loved that the snowman was Sean Connery for some reason. I, for real, I I I was watching this one next on my phone next to my mom, and I told my mom close your eyes and just listen to this, and like <laughs> she yeah. was all it sounds like Sean Connery. <laughs> well, he he literally says the name's uh, man snowman, and you know not to yeah. Connery's Bond, so like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was fantastic. It was very spot on. Whoever they got to do it was very spot on. It was really close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so like one little tidbit, right? So this is obviously a reference to the 1946 play The Iceman Cometh. Um, this also got a reference to American Horror Story when they, they did the whole Axeman story. It was the name of the, right. the Coven episode, The Axeman Cometh. So this this name trope gets used a lot in horror, actually. <laughs> Dude, that's so fun. Yeah, that's so yeah. fun. I love that. Um, but you yeah, know, this was a funny one as well. This is the first one because I mean, obviously, I know we're covering some of these things out of order. This is the first one that we've seen that did not take place in nowhere. Yep, our first vacation one. It was so cool to see them in their cute little like hoodies and their coats for the Arctic and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, adorable. Um, and yeah, so but yes, they thought they were going to some place like sunny, sunny something or um. I always want to say Shady Pines, which is the retirement place in Golden <laughs> yeah. Girls, but it's not. Definitely somewhere warmer because Eustace wanted the warmth. He's more happy with that for sure. You can tell. <laughs> yeah. I don't, know if, I don't think it gets referenced here in the, in the wiki. I was going to see if they had a name of it, but it was yeah, some sort of like sunny tree related place that they were supposed to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I thought I thought it was fun. I like the, <laughs> I cracked up at the, um, the way he got the gene. Was it just a little like hose Open. or a little like um, a faucet? faucet. <laughs> yeah, just stuck to their head. 
just you know just trip trip i mean like you know not like strictly horror but this was definitely like leaning on uh, you know like sci-fi horror a little bit right like yeah. just the mad scientist tropes oh yeah some reanimator type vibes or something but we got the ice man being like the wild scientist you know even mr freeze vibes you could even go mr freeze vibes because he had his little layer his little mm. layer at his scientific desk and stuff <laughs> part of me almost thought they were doing and i might be reading too much into it um but animators and writers know what they're doing so i you know i don't know if they were doing sort of like a like a like an ice cap melting like kind of like a global warming kind of um oh like in yeah. here yeah, like like little, really, yeah, you can see that. A little bit of metaphor of like the the snowman not wanting to melt, but he's going to use human resources and, and let them melt. Um, yeah. So that he stays, you know, so <laughs> sort of like, yeah, tapping out resources, melting, sort of a lot of like just taking these themes and putting in this part of the storytelling. I I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but I mean, I that, that's what I picked up on if they were going for something a little bit deeper here. Because they, they always do in these episodes. There's yeah. always an extra little layer. It's very possible, too, because especially, like you said, at that time with 99 going into 2000, that was a very huge generational shift for everybody. We were a lot of people were thinking about, like you said, the future was like, how is it going to be? What have we done to the earth and what is it going to be like going forward? So it's totally possible that that is subtextually something that they wanted to write into this episode. Yeah, I don't remember when the Inconvenient Truth came out. I mean, obviously, that's not the first thing that ever talked about that was so six um but i mean the, the scientists were talking about it i mean i remember you know my our science teachers in like the late 90s early 2000s talking about like the ice caps and like what's going on and so it definitely like you said it's definitely was in the um the consciousness at that point definitely yeah. i thought it was so cute though this one too was another very action-packed episode when we got into the third act and the snowman starts chasing him and he's like Full on like surfing like abominable snowman. There's like ice and surfing down the snow going after them. <laughs> it was very um again, like so there's this one and there's a couple um coming up that are very like Hanna Barbera, very um oh my gosh, uh Tom and Jerry. Who did Tom and Jerry? Tom, Tom and Jerry was yeah, Tom Barbera. and Jerry or like even like uh I think it was, I was thinking Roadrunner, Wiley e. Coyote style, like yes. Tom and Jerry, very much like that. Oh, well, when we get to the next, the part B of this episode is very <laughs> Tom and Jerry, like Wiley e. Coyote sort of, I mean, this is definitely very much that you get that in the chase sequences too. Um, but yeah, no, super fun. Um, you know, and very like, again, like using the, I, said, I miss 2D animation because you get such like, <laughs> such like, I mean, 3D is very dynamic and you could do a lot more with it or whatever, but I don't know, when you just get like this movement with it, it's just so impressive. Oh um, yeah, I like the detail and stuff, but you can tell like even if it's just a flat two D thing, like sometimes just that hand drawn detail is that little bit extra. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, poor Eustace no, meeting another untimely end in this episode. I just love that he's he's the he's the Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reference. I love that one. Yeah, totally is for sure. Uh, yeah, because his uh, he melts, right? Yeah, he melts, and, and then uh, you have, they have him keeping him like on his little chair and the little was it the mug or the tea jar? <laughs> he was like in a jar, was he in a fishbowl or me? I don't remember. Fishbowl, yeah, I think, yeah, he was on his was chair with the glasses still inside of it. Like, in I love that he melts, and then the courage is like, all right, and he just takes out a Soaks sponge, him just sucks <laughs> him up in the sponge. I thought it was so cute, that was really funny. <laughs> uh, I thought he was gonna put the glasses on the sponge. <laughs> yeah, that would have been cute. And he likes so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but they get rescued and then the snowman freezes. He gets frozen. Yeah, the first ever frozen snowman. <laughs> first ever frozen snowman. You know, so I mean, kept him from melting. That is true. Yeah, if he stays like that, he's going to be fine. He'll be a top school forever. <laughs> you know, careful what you wish for. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if there were any other. Illusions, yeah. Obviously, we did the Sean Connery, the James Bond, Ice Cream Comet. I think that was all the, the other. Little I thought it was maybe like, um, what was it, uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, maybe thing where it, where it shows him going in front of the moon with the sleigh, like that moment where he kind of goes in front oh. of the moon. With the sleigh. Yeah, nice yeah. <laughs> fun, fun little nods. Yeah, obviously, this was like seven, six or seven years after Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Um, and then, well, 
Evil Snowman too. I think did this was after Jack Frost, right? Remember the horror Jack Frost horror film? Wow. Dear God, yeah, I remember that movie though. <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember the good. You know, there was like the family friendly Jack Frost one where the, I think it was a Michael Keaton. Michael right? Keaton, yep, did the voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. He becomes a snowman, <laughs> but they also did the, the horror version. Of <laughs> and I think I remember. You know, what actually, funny story is I think I, as a kid, I rented the horror version, thinking it was the Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. <laughs> that happened very often. It did, yeah. I'm sure it did. <laughs> um, but being, I, I liked horror at the point at that time, so I was like, "Oh, cool! All right, <laughs> <laughs> this is wild." Yeah. Um, but yeah, so not our only killer snowman in the the horror <laughs> zeitgeist. No, no. He's he's a ple- there's a plethora now. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, now it's its own subgenre. Um, ready to go on part yeah. two? Yeah. Now go into the next segment. Uh, yeah, so part two of this episode, the precious, wonderful, adorable, lovable duckling. Uh, inadvertently hatched by Eustace, a tiny duckling mistakes him for its mother and quickly grows fiercely protective. The duckling soon becomes jealous of Muriel, sensing sensing its fatally intentions uh, upon her. Uh, Courage battles the duckling for the safety of his owner. Yeah, so this was the one that was very Tom and Jerry for me. Oh, definitely. Yeah, this one is full coyote or... Yeah, this one was full comical, especially from the start, just with the flying V, the ducks, you see the flying V, and it's like, wah, wah, and then, like, just courage, like, goes up to the little nest, and there's one egg left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, like, the absolute back and forth in this one were really fun. Um, the uh, the anvil gag got me. I, I that play, played out for a good portion of the episode. <laughs> But like that, I mean, that was that was my favorite part of that was the height of the episode. Where it was the handbill gag. <laughs> that was another one. Yeah, the little just a little bit of three D animation. You know, very simple the handbill and stuff. And yeah, mm-hmm. I like how he was pouring. Was it the syrup? It was jelly or syrup? He was pouring down the rope to go it was down to make syrup, but it looked like just like really liquidy jelly. <laughs> yeah, it looked like grape jelly. That's what I got the impression of. But it was it was liquid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I just love that also like, the anvil is being anchored by a fork. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, so, wait to The heaviest fork in the world, yes. Yeah, so just... <laughs> <laughs> but I love humor like that, where it's sort of like, you know, so the duckling is, well, obviously wants to take care of Muriel and, and get her out of the picture. Yep. Um, but every time she goes to take the fork, it's like, oh, I forgot this, or oh, I forgot that, or I... Um, and the joke kind of goes on just a little bit too long, but like, I think that's like the sweet spot when a joke goes on just a little too long. And yeah. They're just like, it's of, like they, screwing it just a little tiny more. <laughs> it Like it, it makes it sort of cringy, but like, I think in a, it, I think it just adds a little bit for me. Some people will be like, all right, enough already. Some people get annoyed by that kind of humor. I'm like, yes, make it, <laughs> make it super cringeworthy because I, I love it. <laughs> Yeah, the ducks like all bite like he was like biting his or his feathers, but like his nails. Yeah. He was like <laughs> in anticipation. Yeah, <laughs> uh, this is another one though, right? Where where courage is um, uh, fighting for their love, right? Oh yeah, that's trying to keep them together. It's just funny that like the duckling just hatches and right away is like mother, mama. <laughs> <laughs> so attached to Eustace, so attached. Taking care of him, putting on his slippers, and getting the newspaper for him. <laughs> My God, right? I, everyone falling for for Eustace, right? Is like, I mean, this one I sort of get because it's more of like an imprinting thing. <laughs> but, that's good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, right. The first thing you see, that's true. Yeah, yeah imprinting. <laughs> the duckling is not really like falling for Eustace's personality. Eustace just likes the duckling because the duckling is like, <laughs> you know. Fawning for can't him, bring but... him yet. Can't bring him and treating him like like a king. <laughs> exactly, which is all he wants. <laughs> this is what he was doing. I think in the first episode, right, or a second, first or second episode, where he was telling Muriel, where Muriel lost her memory. Yeah, he just wanted to make her like the servant. Yeah, the amnesia one with our little quack, Doctor Quack, right? Look. <laughs> yeah, with the see, the, what is with the show and ducks? I have to know. There's an obsession, I think, definitely with birds like ducks, because there's multiple times we're going to see a lot of different versions of ducks. And I think there's even a part in one of these segments, I think, where they had 
one of the alien ducks that's in the pilot is like a toy on a desk or it's it's like a toy or something i think it was either this segment or the previous one or like one of the other ones yeah it, the, you know i feel like the, the ducks play into the conspiracy of it all i have to now i need like the, <laughs> something like about the ducks that maybe this is all like you know the the, the duck overlords are controlling nowhere or something <laughs> <laughs> they're secretly just planted here by aliens and they're the ones that are watching everything <laughs> well we've had the duck god we've had duck aliens we've had this duckling we've had the doctor duck um am i missing duck said that's four yeah i mean that's a lot out of the nine episodes <laughs> <That's a lot laughs> <already. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh man but um no nah, but this was this was a cute one too um any other, well, actually, let me see if there were any. Yeah, check if there's there any were... other ducks. <laughs> there are no little tidbits I have for us in this one. I really right. liked uh, the music, though. Like you said, in terms of these, the Tom and Jerry nature, the music played very heavy into this one. In terms of like, you could uh, have no like no talking, you could have no speaking in this one, and you would mm -hmm. still get the vibe of the story and the feel of the anticipation and the between him and the duckling even if they didn't have any dialogue in this episode <laughs> right i mean that's it i mean it's all about like the, this is the physical comedy right i mean it yeah. really you can build the tension i love episodes like that or shows like that where they i always think of like hush from buffy um where it's like no talking in the whole episode or you know like anything like i'm sure there's a lot more than just that but um where they you just build the tension just right on just the action on screen Oh, yeah, that's so good. <laughs> so shall we get into was it our next first segment of our last episode now? Episode 9? Yes. So episode 9 for us, this is, I guess, the original episode 1. And they yeah, got moved the around. I don't know if we got moved around on Max or it got <laughs> moved around on Cartoon Network originally, but this is how yeah. it was. So. And we can tell definitely for sure. So we're going to start with the first segment of this next episode, which is A Night at the Cat's Motel. Courage and his owners stop at a lonely motel to end their vacation, but it's owned by a nefarious red cat named Cats, who harbors a pen, uh, penchant for feeding his guests to giant spiders. So definitely a lot of horror in this one. This is like a re really heavy horror with that kind of description you said. <laughs> yeah, and the aesthetic too, right? Um, like really gritty animation. Uh, oh, I'm thinking yeah. like there was like that dead end where they play handball. <laughs> but like, <laughs> oh, that was yeah. There was something about that room, like just the colors, the oh, it looked weird. It was so grimy looking. <laughs> it was really gritty. Uh, I was like, are we gonna have to step into a saw trap? Like, what's happening here? Like, it was really. <laughs> it did like yeah, it did have, give vibes of that like bathroom. Like if you were to animate the saw bathroom, it probably would look like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I thought Katz was a cool villain here. Oh, he was very sly, very cool dialogue. Katz was, yeah, very cool. Um, and I think I think Katz shows up again. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, I think possibly because I seeing him, I do recognize, and I feel like there's more episodes with him. Just seeing him in general, I feel like there's more with that character. Yeah, because there's going to be. I'm just looking sort of in the in the tidbit section I have here. Yeah, because there's going to be an episode called Club Cats. Um, ah, sweet. That he's in. So yeah, so he's going to be a bit of a reoccurring. Um, interesting. I don't know. Do cats and spiders tend to have any connection here? Or I don't know. The giant the spiders looked creep. There's a lot of different designs. I like how the spiders all kind of look different. They all had a little different design to them. <laughs> different use of color, like the blacks, the greens, the purples, like. Yeah. Um, really gross looking lips some of them had, or I don't know what you would call that <laughs> on a spider mount. Really creepy. I know. I know that was like they they really gave off that insect bug vibe. They really wanted to get you like with the giant, like a gross insects. <laughs> You're very just leechy like. Um yeah. Oh man. But that's we got a Oh, I was gonna say we got I was thinking to myself. What I was going to say, why they mad and not or switch this episodes around to is because we had, like you said, this one didn't take place in nowhere. This was a mm -hmm. different location as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I liked what you said. I think this is before we were recording that, like, you know, they probably wanted to 
wanted you know people to get used to nowhere right and like really introduce the farmhouse since that's going to be the majority of the show anyway um so it is really sort of weird um but i love that they're sort of like they're making a stop post vacation so i'm like in some weird timeline way are they coming from the the snowman episode to here to <laughs> on oh, their way to <laughs> <laughs> are we just getting like one big cereal like but out of order <laughs> oh yeah it's just one continuous long like your summer or like one long year and we're just seeing like every day <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um but you're right so the the space chicken or space chicken or the space duck uh yeah. is in the bathtub here okay so that's where he was this was the episode that we were popped yeah. up <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean this is this is cool though um obviously so i'm thinking we're getting a little there weren't like visual cues but i think just in general i don't know this might have been a nod to the bates motel in some way <laughs> it could be possibly Cats, I thought it was cute. I don't, you know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i thought it was cute that we got mariel a, ba a bath bathtub scene she got a bathtub scene a bathtub fight scene with the spider <laughs> with the spider throwing you know flushing it down the toilet um, well, I thought we were going to get a psycho reference because she's going in the bathroom, right? Or she's going yeah, to take a bath or close. whatever. <laughs> um, just instead of a knife, it's a spider. <laughs> but I thought it was so funny that when she steps out of the bathtub, like both Eustace and Courage, like going to cover their eyes. Like, I'm like, Eustace is married to her. Like, why is he so ashamed to look at her when she comes out of the bathtub? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know respect i don't know no he doesn't have any respect no, yeah <laughs> he's just not that a very respectful couple yeah <laughs> um but yeah i mean obviously feel bad for courage right so cats you know no dogs allowed i mean that makes sense i thought we were going to lean a little more into like a bit of a cats versus dogs situation when we first started i wasn't expecting spiders <laughs> oh yeah that was kind of a throw that was a weird toss in like it's unexpected but it does make the episode more unique but yeah the handball sequence was just really funny too like you said that's a really good sequence <laughs> mm -hmm. oh yeah um other little things so uh, the one of the room numbers i think was it their room number it was six six six, six and a half six six and a half yeah <laughs> i love that nod uh i thought it was that was pretty almost i remember like platform nine and three quarters or something i was like <laughs> are we sort of like halfway between hell and not <laughs> maybe 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 no yeah, you know, I, I don't know how far away from nowhere this motel is supposed to be <laughs> uh but yeah no i mean i, I thought yeah cat was a cool villain um didn't quite top or or water ghost I forget her name but yes no yeah but very sly, very cool. Um, what else did you think about it? No, I just liked yeah the episode. Like in terms of, it was very. I liked how you said when we were watching it. I think I said this in the beginning before we started filming that it looks different. I think the animation style looks pre some of the other shows that come out. So as I was watching it, I can feel why this was probably the first episode they showed on TV. Like you said, it aired and everything, and then maybe yeah. it's when it got toss to hbo max or something they reorganized the order or something like that yeah i almost wonder if this was like a reworked pilot too like before they like because i know there was another pilot that got put on what like a dvd or something with something else yeah the scooby-doo yes yeah. bonus features for one of the scooby-doo movies yeah and i wonder if that was like the original pilot because sometimes shows get two pilots um you get like because i i know this with power rangers because you know being a big nerd of that there's a there's a <laughs> pilot where there's a different training, um, just totally different actress, different Yellow Ranger, and then that that got canned, and then they did the the original, the, the second pilot, um, and then that became the first episode. So I know like shows do do that. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm wondering if like this was like the reworked pilot, but then they showed it out of order, hence why like it probably was done before they did all the yeah. other ones for the first season, just to sort of get it reapproved or something by the network. Yeah, I even felt like just two similar vibes too with the villain. Like when we get into our next segment, Part B or whatever, that the even the villains had a very similar look to them and design, and 
there was the, both of these episodes were very comical heavy but we also had just just very soft horror elements and you can see where we are watching the other episodes we talked about before this i feel like they were they progressed more in their storytelling and the stuff that they wanted to put in oh for sure um the action was still fun though i i you know i really i you know they're clearly finding their their groove right but i think yeah. this was definitely the grittiest and i almost part of me almost wishes that they kept some of the grit with 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 the other episodes because I'm like this would have really made the show stand out if it was like this sort of you know ah, unpolished. Sometimes unpolished yeah. is, is better. I don't know for some reason. Yeah, know. just rough. You you like the rough edges. It makes it more unique. You know, more distinct. Right. With that, rather than having to, I'm sure they pro- they probably wanted it to sort of vibe with the rest of the block of cartoons and probably make it a little more palatable for everyone. And I get that, but. I don't know. Give me a an alternate universe where they all looked like this. And I'd, <laughs> I mean, could, I mean, could you imagine Fred with this like gritty style, or even Ramses with this gritty style? Ramsey, like, yeah. <laughs> how, how much scarier would they even have been, like looking like this? Oh yeah, that would have definitely been like. That's why I think Courage. This is a show that I think could be reworked and redone for a more adult audience if they wanted to offshoot like a one season thing and just kind of do a more updated version. They can totally probably do that now oh my gosh yeah um just do a few episodes you know you could do like a six episode eight episode season do something right on hbo um doesn't have to be super mature but it could just sort of be like you know played us i mean i know they brought courage back for the scooby-doo movie so i mean like yeah you know i think there's room for more definitely um i to think of any other little tidbits uh Oh, I mean, funny little trivia. The episode title in Japan for this one was Kumo no Su Yo, which means the spider's nest is scary. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so they don't play on cats at all. They were just were like, all right, you, this is a spider episode. We're going to call it a spider episode. <laughs> <laughs> letting you know off the hop. Um, but yeah, but other there is a Pokemon reference, though, in this. Nice. When when courage turns into all of like the different, you know, when he, when he does his little charades thing, yeah. he becomes a dragon, and it's sort of roughly modeled after Dragonite. Oh wow, that's so cool! <laughs> yeah. um, and it was aired, and this was airing around the time of that of Pokemon's like second, third, like first or second season, you know. So it was they were pretty much you know back to back there. I know that was that takes me back to yeah that that was a big thing. Pokemon was a big influence for a lot of shows. I know that because even still today, culture like culturally wise, Pokemon's going strong. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, Pokemon. I mean, along with um, Transformers, X Men, um, like a lot of the like, American animated shows really weren't super serialized, like yeah. in terms of telling like a consistent story. So, like, Pokemon is a big influence because that introduced a lot more serialized storytelling. Yeah. Um, obviously, Gen X had Transformers into Millennials. We had X-Men was very serialized. Uh, Ninja Turtles, right? Dep- depends on the show, but not most of them weren't. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Our, so our uh, next statement. Yeah. <laughs> so... Cajun Granny Stew, and I'm not going to try to do the Cajun accent as much as I love it. I love the accent. <laughs> I love it. It's one of my favorite accents. Um, an orange Cajun fox repeatedly tries to kidnap a sleepy Muriel so he can use her in a Cajun stew. Uh, again, hearkening back to sort of that Tom and Jerry, you know, Fair Coyote, point. Roadrunner, very like a uh, series of slapstick humor, you know, uh, moments. Um, but yeah, no, this, I mean, so yeah, so the, the Fox again, very similar to cats. So I guess they're yeah, kind yeah. of going with a very, what is, I don't really, not lupine. What's the, like, I, I, the, I'm thinking, you know, like, like the categories it's like, oh, I don't know. Um, genus, species. The, the, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The species, right, right. Yeah. Are they under, are Fox and cats sort of under the same kind of like, yeah, with wolves, like in the lupus, like lupin, yeah, lupus. Yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. Thing. I was going in the, in the wrong direction. <laughs> the dog direction. I forgot. But yeah, um, like the, the, the design of these characters pretty much almost the same, I thought, besides the color. And then I guess the fox had a thicker tail, like his tail mm-hmm. is kind of thicker. Yeah. <laughs> Which made me like, do they just not know where they were heading? 
with like so let's just have a similar model make it easy um but yeah i mean maybe, maybe they're siblings i don't know maybe there is a deeper connection to these two. <laughs> <laughs> different accents you know but uh no i thought this one was fun um uh only episode i think we've had so far where there's no use this that's true yeah i was that has that is actually true yeah there was no use to this in this entire episode <laughs> mm -hmm. which is i don't know that if that's if, if there's ever another episode that's like that um i don't think so is the only episode where he doesn't appear oh wow that's great so one and one and only one and unique <laughs> But the Cajun fox does come back. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so the fox and the cat, they do return, interestingly enough. Maybe those uh, are homages because this was, like you said, their first or like their second pilot episode reworked one. So maybe that's why they wanted to bring them back to as well and give them other chances to kind of add to the nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this is fun. I mean, not a lot of story wise. There's not a lot of story here. It's just a lot of the back and forth and um like there's sort of the different antics you know yeah. in, in terms of like capturing muriel freeing muriel yeah. so i feel like they're just finding their groove again with this one yeah so the definitely these first two episodes you get very beginner vibes where like the writers you can tell as the other episodes like we've been previously talking about there's lore there's stuff that they pulled from from other movies or other cartoons and stuff and like I said these ones you can tell it's very kind of just basic let's get these characters out there and stuff and and like I said probably kind of an interesting take to not have used this in the second segment i thought that was kind of interesting yeah you know i so, saw i mean i did i did kind of like that not that i i mean i use this as a sort of a fun villain you love to hate right but um you know give, giving sort of muriel and courage a little bit more time to shine on their own and vice versa like having an episode without muriel or having an episode right i mean, yeah. can't do an episode without courage but <laughs> no no one by i guess by himself yeah but where would he go he'd have to travel somewhere i guess maybe <laughs> right right uh but i mean i like it sort of giving them a little bit of like separate time to shine just the two of yeah. them uh but yeah other little uh, tidbits. Um, there is so there's a musical nod to the old New Line Cinemas logo. Uh, so there's <laughs> nice. a little fanfare, obvious nods to the cartoons of the 40s and 50s, Tex Avery, Chuck Jones, uh, and then the the meat and salami store. Uh, it was named after the writer William um, How Hauser. <laughs> that's cute <laughs> so i love when lumen writers and the, the, they put the, they put things in you know oh i love that too yeah that's so cute just like little things like that it was so nice <laughs> mm -hmm. absolutely um but yeah so i don't know i don't really have too much to say about this one right i mean i feel like it's yeah i think there's just something with this episode i like the fact that it has these two villains in it and they're going to show up again so i'm excited about that probably with the future with these two characters but yeah, yeah. you can tell like said that these definitely different like when when this when these two segments started i had a different flavor and vibe and i can tell it was you know probably like you said an early pilot thing that they reworked and stuff but as a grouping these three episodes were a lot of fun as a whole i thought all three of them were really cool <laughs> Yeah, real like I like the peppering of different flavors, right? Of like all the all the little genres, right? We have some horror, we have comedy, we got sci-fi, we got a little bit of everything, which was really cool. And then yeah, the annoying, adorable, gushes duckling, like oh, he was like that one. I just I wanted to kind of like give him some oh, so the duckling eventually. <laughs> the cute you kind of want to just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Courage had to like, want to help him, you know, when he got stuck to the rocket, though. Courage was still trying to save him. <laughs> and again, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. They, they, they end up on the moon. We're going back to another episode here. But yeah. yeah. I love that. Like, yeah, they're on the moon. He's like rubbing Eustace's feet. I'm like, how are they doing this on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> but again, he got, well, not, I guess, technically didn't get Kennied. You know, Eustace is alive on the moon. Um, but Somehow it's they're going to get him down. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta get yeah. Either fix that rocket, bring him down, or just go up and save him. <laughs> but uh, no, fun, fun batch of episodes. And now I think for this season we've got like four left. I think four left. You want to introduce them? If we have a, if we do only have four left, we might actually just tackle all four in that next episode when we film and stuff. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Leah, let's do it. Um, let me pull in. Mm -hmm. And also people have just down below in the uh, description are links are all that stuff you know hbo max also have the episode lists and all that stuff too in the description down below so you guys can all follow us and find us and everything <laughs> oh yeah because of course i <laughs> i closed the wiki um so here we go uh we have next the revenge of the chicken from outer space uh, uh the journey to the center of nowhere the i like that Muriel. Um, that's like a, I think like a de-aging episode. Um, the Great Fusili, which is, oh, like puppets, not puppets. <laughs> and that could be particularly creepy. Uh, and we also have, which one now? I think I skipped to, oh, Club Cats. Club Cats. And, which is, which is Cats Return. And Heads of Beef. <laughs> oh, about hamburgers. <laughs> nice. so it should be a good batch yeah we should probably just do just do the four episodes then yeah if it's the last that we'll do it is like finishing the season off and we'll just rush it out <laughs> there we go yeah because they're all about 13 episodes i think each season so we're it's gonna either four, eight, nine, nine, nine. yeah yeah there's it's always gonna be on it there's not an, it's not an even number <laughs> yeah so we're gonna be doing three 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 and then the last one will always be the four in the <laughs> um hey you know what i don't mind it <laughs> but thank you for sticking around with all of us or with us all of us <laughs> thank you for sticking around with us as we talked about these episodes like i said follow along subscribe that definitely helps out and steve is there anything that you want to plug that you're going to be doing for voices or anything coming up um, of course, now that you asked me, I'm completely blanking. But just come follow <laughs> us the voices from the mausoleum. Me and Angel would love to have you. We're always always great doing content. stuff. We got the coffee <laughs> crypt, we got news, we do found footage Fridays, we got influential uh, horrors, all kinds of horror. We interview stuff. folks on their favorite horror films. We got yeah, you know everything we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I, I can't be put on the spot. But yes, yes. Just come come check us out. Thank you again, Steve, for joining and everything. Absolutely. It's a blast, as always. All right. Have a safe and happy day, everyone. Peace out.